In this video, I'm going to react to NASCAR's unluckiest moments and give my thoughts on yesterday's All-Star Race. and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture. I'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100% honest reaction to it. And if you could please hit that like button early, I'd really, really appreciate it. So first things first, I want to say a big congratulations to Carl Larson for taking the win yesterday at the All-Star Race. He's on one hell of a roll. <laughs> Even though, you know, this race doesn't count towards the points uh, officially, you know, I think this is his third win on the bounce after the, uh, I believe it was the Coca-Cola 600 and the race at Sonoma about a week ago. So he's got some crazy momentum behind him at the moment. So Larson started the race yesterday in first place due to a random draw. And to be honest, for most of the race, it looked like he had the fastest car on the grid, at least to me anyway. So I think he went uh, three wide with uh, Chase and uh, Kozlowski after the restart and uh, he, he managed to take the lead with only like eight laps to go. It was one hell of a manoeuvre. <laughs> Even though his form would suggest it, uh, Kyle isn't even the, uh, he's not the uh, leader in, in the points at the moment. I believe that's uh, Denny Hamlin. But uh, definitely over the last two months, Larson's been the fastest driver, the fastest driver in the fastest car. So if I had to bet money on who's gonna take the, uh, the championship, <sighs> It's, it's still a bit too hard to tell, but I do think that Larson is going to catch uh, up with Hamlin on, on the points. So yeah, I, I, I think the momentum's definitely in, uh, in Larson's corner. Well done on taking the win yesterday. That was a sweet, sweet maneuver. On to the reaction. This is going to be really, really interesting because it seems like no matter what motorsport it is, there's a big degree of luck involved in these things. You know, you, like there could be something completely unwarranted that happens to your car. Maybe there's a gearbox failure. Maybe there's, you know, something on the track that you drive over and it causes you to swerve out of control. Or there's just a million different things that can go wrong that are outside the team or the driver's control that can just screw up a race for a guy. You know, it, it happens in Formula One all the time. You know, I think it happened in the most recent race. I believe it was uh, Charles Leclerc, I think, of uh, Ferrari, who I think he was in pole, he was either in pole position or second. And um, no, 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 it was Max Verstappen. So Verstappen was leading the race and uh, I believe his gearbox just failed. You know, like I'm sure the team did everything they could, Red Bull, to make sure everything was in working order before the race started. But it just wasn't meant to be for him. It was just completely out of his control. So yeah, this, these sort of things happen in NASCAR quite a lot. So I just thought, yeah, this it was high on my list. So I thought, let's do this today. So let's go. This is gonna be me reacting to some of the unluckiest NASCAR moments ever. Let's do it. Gilliland just wants to make sure that, as Mike said, no mistakes. So this guy's in the One lead right left. now. The final lap final lap. at Texas. What's going to happen here? He missed here? four races early this season while he waited to turn 18. But he's still slowing down. That maybe he would be oh, able to oh, make a play. Oh, he's got a problem. I think he's got a no. problem. Gillen is going to oh, stop in. No. It's going to be the 24 of Haley for the second time in the playoffs. The so this was the final lap of the race. The guy is probably meters away from taking the win and something goes wrong with his engine or something like that. I believe it's an engine problem. Oh, that's got to suck. Leaders with a problem, just like in Canada, Justin Haley's gonna benefit and win at Texas. Oh, Unbelievable. Man. In Sonoma, got California, it. the good news for Jimmy Johnson, Whoa. who leads the bad news for Denny Hamlin. Oh. That's some driving right there. <laughs> How the heck is he? How did he make that corner? He can't even see. <laughs> He's got to be driving How? out the, the, the driver window. Yeah, yeah, okay. Here's why I have this. This is crazy. And, and, and we'll, well, look, obviously, when he came down pit road, he's doing, uh, I, I can't believe he's keeping this. Th I can't believe he's keeping this thing on, on, the, on the road, on the track. Even if he's driving using his, uh, his side mirror or just with his head out of the mirror, you, you've not got a full field of vision. There could be a car coming next to you. This is crazy. 
thing on 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 the racetrack it's right incredible. now. Okay. Maybe his spotter's talking him around, but he's doing a great <laughs> job. And he's still carrying some speed, man. <laughs> that is someone's shoe. Oh, wow. Are they going to call a caution for that? And then here comes Danica. And what's going to happen? Drop kicks it. Mm. Oh. And here is Danica's radio. That I hit. See oh. that? Window gets open because she carried too much speed into the corner. Oh, no. She was able to hold on to the spot, though, and it she looks was. like there's no serious damage. Something's wrong with my steering. Oh, no, she's got a steering issue now. But how would that shoe cause that steering issue unless they're completely unrelated? Yeah, she's now she is becoming preoccupied with things. Here we go for NASCAR's all-star race. The 17th annual running of the Winston gets the green flag. And Steve Park, boy, real loose on the start, almost bunch, fun. Bunch of guys did. Uh, Jeff Burton got What's in the back of Tony here? Stewart and turned him sideways. Oh, the car sideways. All, What's going all the cars are loose mm. down in the corner. The track is wet. It's Gordon, Gordon, Michael Walsh, Kevin 29 Harvey. car. Oh. All these cars are wrecking because I believe it might be raining down there. What? Rain? And the rain is Look, coming even raining. harder. Oh, for Pete's sake. What a way to start this event. Oh, for some drivers. Big damage. What a way to end it. Kelly, what's happening with Denny? You may have noticed at the end of that pit stop, the crew on the 11 car fixing something or hitting something on the roof of that car. I know I've said this a million times, but I love the roar of that engine. That <laughs> just sounds amazing he said the latch for the root half uh, hatch is broken there's an issue you can see that little bit of a gap lying up there and denny saying we got to do something about it or this sucker is going to fly off oh man no plans though just yet to bring him back down pit road but you can see that the crew here for the 11 is certainly on standby that is huge mm. for denny hamlin the implications of him not advancing out of round number two <laughs> It's somewhat of a complicated system because, as you can see, it's very important for it to stay attached. But mm. this... Oh, yeah, there it is. There. Oh, man. Because if that comes off, that's going to completely affect the uh, the aerodynamicness of the car. We've never seen them come loose. They're actually... Bring it to us. Bring it to us. Bring it to us. Bring it to us. You hear them? Bring it to us. This is a man. This is not going to be an easy fix. No. I'm not sure how they're going to fix it. They I mean, can't they... I get, oh, they can't. I was going to say use some kind of adhesive, but traveling at those speeds and without time for the adhesive to cure, to dry, it's not going to stay. I hope the latch is still intact. Welcome back to Martinsville, where Jeff Gordon, who has dominated leading 180 laps this far, has a problem with the right front of his DuPont Chevy. He's hit something hard. Yeah, oh, so I, I think something's hit him hard, Mike, because. If there's nobody around him. Oh, there's your problem. What happened? Here's your problem. Was, it, was right that a here. pothole? I think a piece of concrete possibly came up and hit Jeff Gordon's car. Oh. So it's something in the turn three. Something happens right along in. Let's see here. There, you see the Ooh, dust fly up. And yeah. You see the pieces flying. The track's got a. Oof. Must have a hole in it right there. Here's a better look. Boom. Right yep. there. Wow. Jeez, man. <laughs> Talk about talk about misfortune. Now the pits have not yet opened under this caution flag. They've been closed for some time, Dick Man, Bergman. Uh. And Jerry Nadeau, what a tough break he caught in the Georgia Pacific car. He was the fastest car in practice, was on the pole Thursday night. 19, 10 or 19 cars qualified, and then it rained, it washed it out. They had to go back, revert back to the points, Man. and he goes from first to 39th. Oh, first to 39th due to something completely out of your control. I'd be furious. I'd be furious. Although there's nothing to be done. You... But in the hood is up Whoa. once again on Denny Hamlin's car riding around the racetrack. This is the second time we've seen the hood fly off of the 11 of Denny Hamlin. This time, though, it looks as though. How is he keeping it on the track? The hood pins have been knocked out. It wasn't just that the pins were put on. It looks as though he may have hit someone and knocked those pins out of the front of that car. And he's able to continue on because he can see through the flap uh, in the hood. Yeah. Where, the, where the flap opens, in case the car spins, it keeps it on the ground that's directly in front of him. 
So that's blowing up, and he's actually looking through that hole. This that's is, is able to keep. It's amazing how not only is he, is he able to keep driving, he's able to maintain his position, even though his his vision is compromised. Well done, well done, that man. And if they get side by side, can Vimble close in quickly and make it a three-way race? Yeah, absolutely. And is Johnson going to have to get right to the bumper to really loosen Kazaski up to make that mistake? Just sneaks the left headlight out to one and two here. Oh, there's the move, there's the move, there's the move. Nice move. Nice. He's not going to give it up easily, though. I don't think he can do anything about it now. Two leader, 48. All right, baby, let's tear this thing out. Don't look back. Yeah, there was about a half a second difference uh, last lap. Oh, that's a smoke from the 48 car. Mm. Sports cars with engine troubles early oh, today. No. Inside of six laps to go, Johnson loses the lead. Dave, engine problems. Oh, oh. Lap ago, he said motor laying down, and they radioed back as if they weren't sure if he was kidding or not. He's not. And there it goes. If I bring a call from him. Stay on the bottom. That's it. It's dead. You can see the water yeah. coming out of the exhaust pipe. Dang. Yeah, I think something's wrong with Jeff Gordon. He was racing with Tony Stewart. I don't know if they, they did make some contact, and I don't know if it's affected... Uh... To be honest, I guess, you know, when you're pushing a car to the limit, you're driving, you're reaching speeds, touching 230, 240 miles an hour. Even if you, pro you properly, you know, do all of the checks, you're still pushing that car to the limit. So... Under that amount of stress, these engines can be prone to some kind of malfunction, I guess. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Gordon's tire or something, Matt, what are they saying down there? DW Steve mm. Latard, the car. That car there was beasting it down the outside. Our chief has a pair of binoculars. He's trying to get a look at the front valence. Now, Robbie Loomis felt like they might have some kind of damage to the valence. Loomis now getting off the pit box to take a look as well, talking to a NASCAR official. Man, he hit something hard. I think that's the racetrack oh, no. has come up and uh, a piece of the track has damaged the whole hell of a lot more than that. Just like what happened to him at the Martinsville last year. Look at that. When you're on old tires, and, and if you don't change the tires, the danger is picking up something right here. Did you hear that? That rev, those revs. Oh yeah. This is where all the garbage and the dirt and, and the pistons off of Jamie McMurray's engine. Yeah, Sounds right so good. And, and it was just a gas and go. He leaves pit road. He runs up on the apron, and instantly it comes apart. Yeah. Man, so V8 engines have the best sound. Honestly, I think. Went flat from the time he left pit road or left his pit stall there. Kansas Flint Boyer might be glad that this is a holiday weekend because if he wins this race, the party might go on for a while. <laughs> I just saw some smoke out of that 15 oh, right no. there. Maybe Clint yeah. didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah, right oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. All done. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Caution is out. That's good. Wow. Oh, that's too bad. He was running fast. Well, some of the fastest laps on the racetrack right until right then. Leading the race. Oh. Well, he felt something. He knew something. He sure did, yeah. That's... Back live at Michigan under caution for the sixth time today. The reason, Casey Kane, the race leader who had a 3.6 second advantage in the wall off of turn two. Oh, no. Let's see. 207 miles an hour. That's uh, probably going to be a uh, bro oh. right front tire. Oof. Wow. Exactly what it was. And... <sighs> Just about the worst place, too, right as you yeah. load it up one into turn one. And and normally, Casey would be one of those guys that's running the high line. He would have been about two feet off the yeah. wall because that's where he runs. But the groove has yet to move. Still the same place. Bad, bad. I mean, when he hit the wall there, although it wasn't like a head-on smash, because he's going at 208 miles an hour, everything is going to be intensified. Man, hope he was all right. Bad, bad luck for Casey. Vickers wants to go. <laughs> Love it. Ain't getting a little wider. Oh. There he goes. Junior. Oh. No. No, 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 no. 
Oh man. So you took out yourself and Earnhardt. <sighs> and Jimmy Johnson. Caution is and out. Jimmy Johnson. The leaders had already taken the white flag. Remember, look at the outside wall here. Right at the end of the outside wall, that's where the yellow, the double red lines are. And it looks like that's when he jumped, but he got such a good restart. And Bobby Hamilton looked like he was a little slow on the takeoff. And then maybe the difference there is what maybe caused NASCAR to say, hey, he jumped the restart. Yeah, and it's just like football. There's bad calls here and there, and that seemed like a bad call. They will put uh, two rounds of wedge into the right side. And oh, the no. The gas can gets held in. And just as you oh. think, it couldn't get any worse. He will have to come back in and assess that penalty. David Reagan hasn't won. Regan Smith, the rookie. Paul Menard is there. Tony Stewart has never won at Talladega in a NASCAR Sprint Cup car. Oh, He's do a lot of blocking right here. They've got to run on him. Ooh. Got to run. Here they come. I can't go down there and do that, though. Actually, I think that. it's legal on the last lap. He might have got it right there. I think it's legal on the last lap. Oh no, Tony Stewart, so close to getting that first win. Gutted. Here's the replay again, watch a zero one. And he got the forced down there. I mean, Tony Stewart actually forced him down a little bit. Well, yeah, if you're gonna consider that he only, yeah. They are saying Tony Stewart has won the race. Oh. Tony Stewart is the official winner here at Talladega. They would not allow that pass below oh. the yellow line. That's the only way that can be. You can't go, you can't race one well way for 187 Thank laps you, and change on the last lap. And how about the 88 of Kraft and Oh, look at there. Oh, how about nice. this? Blew off on Austin, Austin Dillon's, Dillon's hood up in front of the wind. It does seem like this, um, this uh, phenomenon where the, the, the hood of the car bounces off or is released by the latches is, is a common thing. Why is that? Are they not fastened down firmly by the, by the, by the pit crew or... Is it just something that can't be? Is it like a freak thing that's happening? Because I feel like this is something that could be fixed quite easily. Shield. Running second. He running second. Running in the second Bye, spot. And he was oh, no, fourth in points. He can't see a thing. Up, he can't see a thing. He coming inside, outside. He Holy may be cow. able to see, but NASCAR, you, can see, see here. you can see he can see. Oh, yeah, because uh, in America, you drive on the... Uh, the driver sits on the left hand side don't they so yeah he that's him right here i see but he's got to come to pit road here rip it off rip the damn thing off here goes kyle bush see if he can make that work down on the inside he's trying to make this pass and i think it's going to happen oh. Oh. Man. Oh. Up across the racetrack and contact with the zero seven car reed sorensen gets a piece that's jason white oh man oh my good wow and hard lick right front, That's the your front of that car. For the NASCAR Nationwide Gone. Series, and he could is he leaking? It looks like he's leaking some kind of. Uh, that isn't fuel. That's probably coolant, maybe. Oh man. Be done for the night. Kyle chooses to talk about this. He's not going to have very good things to say. You can see he's taking the lead right here. Here comes the 07 oh. car. Chase Austin right down in front. It's gone from the outside. Big smash. Dale Earnhardt Jr. out front. Can he make it? White flag. Next flag ends the race. Hamlin trying to close. Track's clear. We're good to go. Seven back. Seven back. Harvick third. Reagan fourth. Logano fifth. What a topsy turvy finish to the Coca Cola 600. And Dale Jr. is scooting away. Uh oh. Uh oh. He's slowing, isn't he? 150,000 people on their feet. Oh, Jr. No. is slowing. He's out of fuel. Oh. He's out of gas. Out of gas. And as that ends, turn four does not get to the flag Harvick. disaster he ran out of fuel perfect the closer wins it once again where did he come from <laughs> golly gee have you ever no i am once again never wow that was just uh incredible most of those were freak accidents nothing to be done about it but the last one with dale earnhardt jr running out of fuel i mean surely the team the pit crew knows how much fuel you're going to need to get around the track surely by now you know with all the information they've they've taken over the many races they've done so surely you would allocate a bit of a buffer so a bit extra 
just so that you know this never ever happens. I know it's happened in the uh, in the Indy 500 quite a few times where um, you know they they purposely put in just the right amount of fuel to get you know to reduce weight, but to also you know finish the job. But it's such a risky strategy. Man, this was crazy. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, and keep throwing the recommendations my way. I know I say it all the time, but they genuinely help me out because if I know you enjoyed watching something, I'll definitely enjoy reacting to it. So like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, keep throwing the recommendations, and I'll catch you in the next one.